Mega Man The Power Battles is an arcade game released by Capcom in 1995 and would eventually be successful enough to merit a sequel being made, but never really got the home console treatment until 2004 when it was ported as part of the Mega Man Anniversary Collection as well as its own Japanese-only compilation pack. Before then, the closest you'd get to playing this thing outside of arcades was the Neo Geo Pocket Color release in 2000, but it's not quite the same thing due to the lesser hardware. Anyway, Mega Man The Power Battles is a simplistic game compared to its console counterparts in that it's essentially a boss rush of sorts. You pick from one of three characters, Mega Man, Proto Man, or Base, all of whom have slight differences in performance but otherwise operate the same way. From there, you could choose from one of three phases, the first containing bosses from Mega Man's 1 and 2, the second containing bosses from Mega Man's 3 through 6, the final phase containing six of the eight Robot Masters from Mega Man 7, since that was the newest game in series at the time. In fact, the whole visual style is inspired by the seventh entry in the series, but feels a bit more animated, as it were, compared to the SNES original. Like in most Mega Man titles, you could pick your stage in any order, and once those initial six stages are cleared, you can move on to the final Wily levels. Unlike most Mega Man titles, picking a stage involves the cursor moving around randomly in a roulette-style fashion and stops either after a while or until you push a button. I suppose this was done to make things interesting, but it really doesn't work for me. On top of that, you have no clue which stages contain what boss until you land on said stage, so you may want to memorize which is which and practice your wheel stopping bits before giving this game the old college try. And so this is the first time you're playing a Mega Man arcade game. Even the stage select is a bit of a chore. So you pick a stage and you fight off against the boss of said stage in one-on-one -on -one combat. Defeat the boss and you'll gain its weapon to use against other bosses. As per tradition, there's a rock-paper-scissors aspect where certain weapons work best against certain bosses, and as you progress farther into the game, bosses will possess more stamina than before, making him the more challenging to defeat. Once the initial six stages are clear, you'll face off against another sub-boss, either the Yellow Devil Rock Muster thing or the Tank thing from Mega Man 7, before eventually facing off against Dr. Wily in the final battle. So it's a fairly short game, but also fairly intense, which is expected from an arcade title of this ilk. The other unique aspect of this game is that a second player can join in on the robot bashing fun, and the two of you can team up against the evil Dr. Wooly or whatever his face is supposed to be. Power Battle is hampered by three bits, the limited stage select that doesn't tell you who you're facing until you pick a stage, and the whole thing being done as a roulette of random chance rather than a proper stage select, which messes with the whole rock-paper-scissors format because you have little control over what order you play the stages, it's just a matter of luck and memorization. The second bit is the lack of power-ups, no health pickups or anything of the sort, and when you win, you only get a slab or two of health back. Now this isn't a big deal since it was an arcade game we're talking about, and arcade games are generally designed to take your money by being as excessively difficult as possible, but at the same time... <sighs> and finally, other than minor visual bits, there are no differences between the three characters. They all shoot, they all charge, they all slide or dash, and not much else. Proto Man has a shield out when he dashes, but it's only there for visual effect, not much else. Oh well. Power Battle has some fairly colorful visuals with some neat background effects in the final Wily battle, but nothing truly spectacular. The art style is primarily based on Mega Man 7, which makes sense because that was the latest game in the series. Which means, yes, more chubby Mega Man. But all that aside, it's a nice looking game with some of the classic robots making the transition to not 8 bits exceptionally well, so now a lot of them seem bigger and more imposing than they did before, others not so much but they still look okay. If nothing else, there's slightly more animation among the three player characters than in the SNES original, and while the game only has a few backdrops, at the very least there's some minor changes made so they look somewhat different from each other for whatever that's worth. I also like the fact that while you only have a handful of backdrops, there's various detail changes on these levels depending on the boss you're fighting, which is a nice touch. Mega Man The Power Battles comprises largely remixed versions of pre-existing Mega Man tunes, almost all of which would make their way over to the Rockman Complete Works remix in some form or fashion. The version included on the Anniversary Collection is based on the CPS1 version, which apparently has lesser quality music, but it doesn't change the fact that the music pool here is fairly tiny regardless, not to mention filled with random choices. How do you have Cutman in the game, but no Cutman theme? Before you tell me otherwise, you're probably thinking of the sequel, which also had limited music choices, but I digress. Your mileage may vary on the remixes, but I thought they were alright, some being better than others. Sound effects are also a somewhat considerable upgrade from the 16-bit version, but okay, whatever. 
Overall, Mega Man The Power Battle is a quick little diversion that is considerably shallow compared to its console and handheld brethren, but still offers enough of an appetizer in Mega Man action that it doesn't feel like a complete waste of time. As a novelty game, it's one worth trying out, whether it be on its own compilation disc, the anniversary collection, or if you look out on an arcade machine that's still standing for some reason. Of course, if you're playing this on a disc of some sort, then Power Battle might not see much in terms of playtime, because there's likely a better game on that disc that you should be playing because it's just a tad better than Mega Man The Power Battle. But that's another story.